Hello, I want to introduce a little project that uh, was released today called Go Fixture Plate. It's in the IPLD org on GitHub. It's a tool that uh, came out of some work we were doing on retrievals, trying to get test fixtures for um, UnixFS pathing and just DAG pathing in general for cars and downloads, all that sort of stuff. Um, we needed fixtures, but we also needed assurance on um, that we were making sure we got the right blocks that we wanted out of a DAG for all the different forms of queries we were making. So I'm going to quickly show you how this works as a CLI. You can download the binary called fixture plate from um, GitHub or you can go install it. Um, so I'm, I've got a CID here that I'm going to fetch with Lassie. I'm going to fetch that off wherever it's coming from. Um, and I know this CID um, can, uh, points to a DAG that is a single file um, that's that takes up many blocks. So I'm going to now use fixture plate to explain that car for me and see what's in it, why it needed to have so many blocks. So here I can see my my single file is sharded across many uh, leaf blocks and you can see which bytes take up which blocks. Um, so this explains why that one CID resulted in all these blocks. You can do more interesting things like uh, I'll get the Wikipedia CID. So Lassie fetch Wikipedia, I'm going to select, select the, fetch the cat page from Wikipedia. So that contains a bunch of blocks too. So why did one page need so many blocks? Fixture plate, explain uh, that file. And I'm going to, I'm going to also uh, say ignore missing because there's a lot of missing blocks here because it's not all of Wikipedia. So now I can see that this, this one file, cat, was sharded across two different blocks and it was part of a sharded directory. The wiki directory is really large, so it gets sharded at multiple levels, and this shows you how it navigates through that. So the CID re I requested relates to the page that I got um, through all of these steps, and this is how we make a trustless car, and this explains how we navigate through the DAG to get the blocks we want. Now we can do more interesting things with fixture plate. Uh, we can generate some uh, some synthetic DAGs for use in testing. So, I, and it's got a little DSL on the command line. I'm going to generate a directory that's got 10 files that are approximately 1k each, well that are 1k each. Um, and it's going to tell me what it's doing, give me a car, uh, I can explain that car and it'll show me what it did, it made this, this directory for me. Now it can get uh, much more interesting than that, so I can say, um, let's say one file with one meg, but I want to make a subdirectory that is sharded. Uh, this is where it gets really interesting. And each that subdirectory is going to take have 20 or approximately let's take approximately 20 files of approximately 10 bytes each. Um, so let's make that. I'm going to explain that. Uh, I'm going to dash dash car. Explain that whole DAG. So this is the whole DAG that we made. This is the kind of thing you would see, maybe not with these names, but this is a, uh, a random um, DAG that I might use for testing purposes. Now, how would I use it for testing? Well, let's say I want to get this file here, which is inside of a sharded directory. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to explain that car again, I'm going to path it into that file, and it will show me which blocks uh, would be needed for a trustless query from the root all the way down to that file. And I can even do things like byte ranges. So if I get this one meg file and I want bytes, let's say this block, we'll get this block to the end. So this is the kind of query you would do. So this, I've now just got the certain byte range of that file. But if I did this query, if I pass that query onto the IPFS trustless gateway, um, I would download a car and I should get back a car with these four blocks in it. Um, just for that, the that entity bytes query there would get that. So this is useful for that kind of testing. Um, so now this is useful for um, in our retrieval tools for testing. We've got it built into some of our um, integration tests. Um, but I, I think it's actually a really good tool for understanding DAGs, particularly as we start talking about trustless cars. You can use this to actually explain to you what on earth is inside the car and why you should trust it. And that's it.